Thank you. Um, humpback whales must be one of the most enigmatic and inspiring creatures in our world's oceans. They breach, they sing, you were listening to singing humpbacks from the Cape Verde, and they fluke. And this image of a fluking whale has become one of the icons of the environmental movement. Ireland has a history of whale exploitation. Um, the first whaling station in Ireland was in the late 1700s in Donegal, uh, out of Inver, in Donegal Bay, where they killed mainly um, fin whales. Um, but the main whaling stations were off County Mayo, and in 12 years at the start of the last century, they killed 900 whales, but only six of those were humpback whales. And that's because humpback whale populations were already severely depleted worldwide through overhunting. This is all brilliantly captured in James Ferry's Irish Whales and Whaling. But humpback whales have been protected now for 40 or 50 years, and the number of sightings of humpbacks in Irish waters is increasing. The, uh, the number of sightings being reported to the Irish Whale and Dolphin Group have gone up and up and up over the last 20 years, and we're getting over 100 sightings of humpback whales every year in Ireland. Now, Sightings are mainly clustered around the, the south and southwest coast off uh, West Cork and West Kerry. Um, but things are changing. In the last few years, sightings have started moving up the western seaboard, and we're getting more sightings coming from um, County Clare and County Galway. And hopefully in time, they'll be pushing up further north into, into County Donegal. Humpbacks are moving around. So within the same year, individual whales uh, are moving from Cork to Wexford, via Waterford, and from between Kerry and Cork. One whale, which was photographed off Kerry uh, in the spring, was then seen off Cork, and within a couple of weeks, he went back to Kerry. I'll let you work that one out. You can recognize individual humpback whales by unique and distinctive markings on their fluke when they lift their tail out of the water. It's a very diagnostic feature of humpback whales. If a whale flukes, if you see a whale fluke in an island, it's more than likely a humpback whale. So this pattern here is distinctive as your fingerprints, but is much more easy to photograph. So we can use that to recognize individuals. We also use uh, dorsal fins. So some whales have quite distinctive dorsal fins, and, we, and they're much easier to photograph. Sometimes we see humpbacks in very shallow water, so they don't lift their tail. And in fact, this one here is known as boomerang. It's our most familiar whale. It's called boomerang because it keeps coming back. And we've seen it now on over 44 occasions over a 12-year period. Many of these images come from a whole range of uh, sources, from mariners, from sailors, from kayakers. Uh, and a lot of them come from whale-watching vessels, which is an increasing um, marine tourism industry in Ireland. And, uh, uh, hopefully will develop more, especially with the success of the Wild Atlantic Way. So this is a fantastic example of citizen science. And everything I'm showing you here, really, is being collected by non-scientists, not doing dedicated work, but just by us engaging with people who are out there, taking their information, sharing the information, and adding it together, and creating this fantastic story. So by collecting these images of humpback whales sent to the Irish Whale and Dolphin Group, we put together an Irish humpback whale photo ID catalog. Very catchy title. And you can see the evolution of this catalog was very slow. So since 1999, when we got our first image, uh, it took 16 years for us to photograph 31 different individual whales. In 2015, we doubled that in one year. We increased it. 35 new individual whales were added to the catalog totally down to the dedicated work of a colleague, Nick, Ma Nick Massett, in West Kerry. Five years before that, you never see a humpback whale in West Kerry, or very, very rarely. Now, they're, they're, they're part of the scenery. So the number of whales doubled in one year, and now we're getting about 10 new whales, individual whales, into the catalogue every year. The first one for 2018 has already arrived, March 25th off Crow Head on the Bear of Plincher in West Cork. Patrick Lyon photographed a new whale in the catalogue. And only uh, on Monday, uh, the first whale arrived back in West Kerry, and it's number 37, and we've recognised it from previous years. So the whale season 
is upon us. Most of these whales are seen more than once. Only 20% have been seen once, where the other 80% have been seen on more than one occasion. Two-thirds of them have been seen um, up to five times, and 14% over 10 times. Now, I'm giving you the numbers. I'm a scientist. I like numbers. I like percentages. But it reinforces the story, if I can back it up with some statistics, if you like. So this is showing that humpback whales are staying around. They're staying around island for weeks, if not months. They're not just passing through on the way to somewhere else. My last slide, my last uh, graph, um, it's probably the mo most interesting from my point of view, is that the number of years within which the humpback whales have been seen. So we find that 45% have been seen only in one year, which means 55% over a half have been seen in more than one year. And in fact, 9% of the whales in our catalogue have been seen uh, in over five years. So these whales are coming back to Ireland year after year after year. And of course, remember, these are the only ones that we photograph. And it's not always that easy to get out and photograph humpback whales. So there's probably more, um, more uh, whales than, than we're recording. So what's bringing them here? Why are humpback whales coming to Ireland? Well, they're coming to feed. Here is uh, two humpbacks bubble netting off West Kerry. They're not feeding on seabirds, as that photograph might suggest. They're not photographing, uh, film, uh, feeding on dolphins, as that photograph might suggest. But of course, what they're feeding on is, is fish, uh, especially small pelagic prey, things like sprat and herring, and sand eels, because humpback whales only feed for half of the year. They, there's no food on their tropical breeding grounds, so they must feed uh, the rest of the year in their feeding grounds. They must take on enough energy over a short period to sustain them through the rest of the year and to produce and rear and suckle a calf. So feeding times and feeding areas are critically important for humpback whales. So where are these whales coming from? That's what we've been asking ourselves. The traditional model, um, you can't see this terribly well, there are some more models here. The traditional model of hump whale migration in the North Atlantic is um, there are five main feeding areas in the high latitudes, and most of these whales go down to the West Indies, the Caribbean, um, thousands of them. And there's a much smaller population down here in Cape Verde, off West Africa, of which we have uh, whales from uh, Norway and Iceland traveling down to Cape Verde. So where are our whales coming from? Well, we can uh, biopsy sample humpback whales in Ireland, and that is by firing an arrow with a crossbow into the whale and taking a small plug of skin and blubber. And this enables us to do genetic studies, enables us to look at pollution levels, and also enables us to look at the sex or gender of the animal. So the first two animals we sampled, and it took us many, many years to get two samples, were both males. And five of the next six samples that we took were also males. So we came up with this theory that maybe humpback whales in Ireland are young animals that are prospecting new feeding grounds and are building up their reserves and their energy before they uh, go to the breeding grounds and compete with other big males to get access to females. Well, that's a good theory. To date now, we've taken uh, 11 samples from humpback whales and six are males, and five are females. So that theory is out the window. Maybe the whales in Ireland are non-breeders or failed breeders, because now in April, this is the peak time for humpback whales breeding in Cape Verde off West Africa. So what are they doing here? We don't know. One thing we can do from the biopsy samples is look at pollution levels. And by looking at the contaminant profile, because everything in the ocean carries some persistent pollutants, the persistent pollutant contaminant profile is much more uh, similar to whales we've sampled off Cape Verde than whales we've sampled off um, Northwest Atlantic. So the evidence suggests that they're coming from Cape Verde and West Africa. So we've been down to Cape Verde to see if we can uh, match some whales. Um, 
through the painstaking kind of work of Paul Cooley, who, who manages our Humboldt Whale catalog, we can take our images and we can share them with colleagues around uh, the North Atlantic to see, have you seen the whales that we've seen in Ireland? So um, a humpback whale that uh, was photographed in September in West Cork was seen six, year, six years earlier in, uh, in Gibraltar, which was a great surprise. But Gibraltar isn't a breeding ground, so the whale must have been passing through on the way from somewhere else. So we've uh, gone down to Cape Verde on five occasions to try and photograph whales and try and see, is Cape Verde the source of Irish humpback whales? Humpback whales, uh, Cape Verde is a very difficult place to work. It's very windy. The Saharan winds blow incessantly across uh, from Africa. There's very little marine infrastructure. But it's a great place to be. Whales fluke. They tail slap. They slap their pectoral fins. Um, and this is all to uh, access uh, females, because this is a breeding ground. So we have females with calves. So we haven't managed to establish and make any link between West Africa and Ireland. Um, but uh, we have managed to make some matches elsewhere to the north. So a whale photographed in West Cork, uh, in, again in September, was actually seen four months earlier in the Netherlands. Um, and that was a great surprise, because humpback whales are very rare in the North Sea. And even more to our surprise was two months later, the same whale in West Cork was then seen back in the Netherlands. Our surprise went through the roof when a colleague in Norway photographed the same whale five years later off Tromso in northern Norway. And he photographed it again two years later. Our first uh, matches with Iceland were in 2014 when a whale photographed in um, West Cork was recorded in Husvik. Uh, then later, a whale photographed in Husvik was seen 42 days later off West Kerry. And we've seen that same whale now off um, West Kerry in two of the last three years. And then finally, uh, another whale photographed off Falaxafoy in West Iceland was also recorded in Kerry. So we do know that these whale, these, some of these whales, at least, are coming from, from Iceland. So we don't know where Irish whales, Irish humpback whales breed, but we do know that we share a population with Iceland. And it's our intention now to sail to Iceland in May on our research vessel, Celtic Mist, to try and um, photograph more humpback whales so that increase the chance of us making matches between Ireland and Iceland. But probably more importantly is for us to build connections and relationships with the Icelandic people uh, to remind them that our two island nations actually share a humpback whale population. So thank you for your interest, and I hope that um, in a few years' time we'll be talking about humpback whales off County Donegal. <laughs>